Thanks for joining me. It's Dr. Terry Levine. And today I want to ask you, what really inspired you to launch your company? And what is compelling you in the current moment to scale it? I'm going to share my story and then I'm going to give you some things that you can apply to your own business. So I started my first company right after I got my master's degree because I wanted to be my own boss, right? My parents were a bit uh, perplexed. They never had their own businesses. And this was truly my dream. I spent countless hours promoting my business and I went and got a small business loan to get started. And I began a speech language pathology clinic in Danville, Illinois. I almost lost my life savings because I realized pretty quickly I had no business, no sales and no marketing experience. I knew how to be a speech language pathologist. After a year, I actually figured it out. And a few years later, I was able to sell that business. And then I launched my next business and I then took the system that I had for business sales and marketing and applied that to the next business. I had some very important lessons, including a healthy dose of humility, which had been imparted by that initial setback, right? So for instance, this time around, I sought out the top business leaders in my new field, and I approached them individually requesting an interview to learn their secrets to company success and getting their advice on how to get started because now I was open and curious. I persisted in kind of hounding these major actors until eight out of 10 actually consented to meet with me over the phone. You know, at first they were ignoring me. And in some of the one-to-one chats, they were really open and honest about things they had learned, giving me pieces of advice that they could offer me when just starting this new business. So I considered very carefully everything they had to say. And I made sure that I was learning the things that they had emphasized and listing them as critical and crucial for success in every business. I researched the best practices for starting and growing a company. I read tons of books on the subject. And I have to say more importantly, I learned as I went along with day-to-day operations of expanding my firm. And I kept my eyes wide open, curious the whole time. So after working in the second business in that industry for eight years, I became what they considered an overnight success. And I sold that company for $12 million. In the decade that followed that, I launched five more businesses, completely different industries, and I sold four of them. Each one was a multi-million dollar company. Each one followed my proprietary formula and it just didn't matter what the industry was. What I learned, and this is what I want you to breathe in, is that I could not be solo in a company. That's a hobby. Instead, I found and recruited amazing individuals to come beside me and to give their all to my company. So it wasn't just me anymore. I didn't have to show up every day, do the work, work with clients or patients. If I wanted to, I could, I didn't have to. The team did the day-to-day and I got to do what I loved, be the visionary. Now, it really pains me when I hear business owners literally hanging on by a thread and hoping they can keep doing their business, somehow it will work, Uh, somehow they're gonna get more time freedom. And my joy comes from assisting company owners to grow their enterprises, and some of them wanna construct new ones to have multiple locations. Along with being a wife, which is just the role that is number one for me, the second role is being a business consultant because I have impact on so many businesses And it is like the ultimate puzzle and playground for me. I just love it. I've written books on developing companies. I've built what is perhaps the most successful business consulting company in the U.S. because of this. I think the evidence speaks for itself and the metrics and the progress of my client family members and their independence certainly speaks volumes. The average yearly growth of our clients is 32.4%. And additionally, our typical client has cut 80.5% off the reliance on them within their company. What does that mean? They can spend more time with their elderly parents, their kids going on vacation, their hobbies, their health, their spiritual practice, their community, you name it. Now, just so you know, I am extremely detail-oriented and I despise it 
when someone urges me to do anything with first outlining all of the procedures. And this is why most of my business writing, including books, articles, and yes, even emails, are a bit lengthy and technical. I do believe, though, you are worthy of the specifics that reveal how to expand your business and how to reclaim your life. I guarantee that if our business relationships develops over the next few months, you're going to receive this concise, practical guidance on how to expand your company in the best possible way. Your sales and profits will increase if you follow this process, and you're going to have more flexibility as we work together to actually make your company less dependent on you. Your business can be strong, dynamic, and profitable, and actually really enjoyable to own. And I'm honored and pleased when someone says, come be a part of my team. I create for each person that I bring on a solemn vow and assurance to help. So as you are here listening to this podcast over the next few weeks, the next few months, I'm going to give you specific instructions meant to reduce your workload while simultaneously increasing your company's output and income. You can have faith in what I say because it's tried and true in the businesses of my consulting clients just like you, over 7,200 of them. It's time to act, so I'm going to give you something to do here. Decide firmly to create your business to be more than a job, which means you don't have to see patients or clients every single day to make money. I want you to write down the top five to seven reasons that you're dedicated to this goal of scaling your business, making more money, making more impact, and having a lot more time freedom. Let me share the most important things to me. Well, first, growing a business is like solving the ultimate puzzle. It's full of very exciting challenges. Second, I adore the independence and adaptability that my business bestows upon me. And instead of letting my business dictate my schedule and my priorities, I prioritize being with my family. The next thing for me is the peace of mind. Just provides it for me and my loved ones. That's actually priceless. The other thing is seeing my team succeed. That is a source of great joy for me. Building new books and new educational programs is something I enjoy doing very, very much. And last, certainly not least, I want to pass forward my business knowledge and have a positive impact on it. So it's your turn. I want you to start compiling a list of reasons that you want to establish a business that can stand on its own two feet, give you more income and massive time freedom. I'm going to tell you that if you send me that list and in the subject line, send it to Terry at heartrepreneur.com, heart, R-E-preneur.com, Terry, T-E-R-R-I at heartrepreneur.com, subject line, one page plan, subject line, one page plan. I'm actually going to give you a free tool. Nothing to pitch, nothing to sell. Please review us. Give us a great review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on whatever your favorite podcast platforms are. And let me know if you're getting value. I'm here to help you.